This video looks at the topic of nuclear fusion. By the end of the video you should be able to explain what is meant in chemistry by nuclear fusion, giving a very precise definition. You should be able to give examples of nuclear fusion, given enough information, and, and write nuclear equations to express those processes. And finally, you should be able to give the conditions needed for nuclear fusion to occur and explain why those conditions are necessary. You should already understand that matter is made up of atoms and that atoms are made up of subatomic particles like protons, neutrons and electrons. There's around a hundred different elements and each element has atoms with a particular number of protons in and then there's neutrons and electrons as well. Well, one question we might ask is, how did these subatomic particles join together in the first place to form all these different atoms, these different elements? And the answer is nuclear fusion processes occurring in stars. So nuclear fusion essentially means uh, the process by which atoms are formed from, built up from, subatomic particles. Uh, and that occurs in stars. So all the atoms that we see in the world around us, uh, we can think of as being originally put together uh, in a star. We need to be able to give a more precise definition of nuclear fusion uh, than that more general description. Uh, and so the definition you should learn is as follows. Two nuclei combine to make a single heavier nucleus. So nuclei is the plural for nucleus. So two nuclei combining, fusing, to make a single heavier nucleus. It's very important that you learn this precisely. If you were to talk about atoms bonding together, uh, that would mean something completely different else. That would be uh, chemical reactions happening on Earth. So this definitely only involves the nucleus um, of an atom, and so two nuclei combining to make a heavier nucleus. To help us understand this idea of nuclear fusion a bit better, we'll look at some examples. Now, uh, let me just reassure you, you don't need to memorise any particular nuclear fusion reactions. Um, you will need to be able to take written descriptions and turn them into nuclear equations, and we'll look at that shortly. So, um, for the moment, these examples are just to illustrate the idea for you and help you uh, picture what's meant by nuclear fusion. We'll look at a simple example, first of all. Uh, imagine a a hydrogen 1 nucleus fusing with a hydrogen 2 nucleus. So hydrogen 1 is just the one proton that is in every hydrogen nucleus, no neutrons, uh, the uh, mass number is just one from the one proton. The hydrogen 2 nucleus has both the one proton that we'd expect in the hydrogen nucleus and now a neutron as well, giving it the mass number 2. Remember we can also call hydrogen 2 deuterium. So what would we get if these two things fuse together? Well, uh, nuclear fusion involves uh, nuclei combining to make heavier nucleus. Um, and so we can represent them combining. If we look at that and do a count, uh, we could write uh, the following symbol for it with uh, a mass number now of three, because it's got three particles in its nucleus, and an atomic number of two, because it's now got two protons one proton coming from each of the original hydrogen nuclei. We need to write an element symbol and we can't write H anymore because it's not hydrogen anymore. Hydrogen only ever has one proton in the nucleus. This has two. So we could look at the periodic table and look for the element that has two protons in the nucleus and find that would be helium. So this process of nuclear fusion has formed a helium-3 nucleus. Here's a slightly more sophisticated example for us to look at, and it introduces the idea that when two nuclei fuse, you don't necessarily just get one product. Sometimes the product that you're expecting uh, is unstable, and so immediately splits into two or more things. Uh, if we work our way through this example, uh, we've got deuterium and tritium fusing. Now, hopefully you remember what those are. They're both isotopes of hydrogen. Deuterium is hydrogen 2. Uh, so one proton and one neutron in the nucleus, giving mass 2. Tritium is hydrogen 3, one proton and two neutrons in the nucleus, giving mass 3. Now if those two were to fuse together, uh, we'd expect a nucleus with mass 5 
and atomic number 2. Mass 5 because it's now got 5 particles in the nucleus, and atomic number 2 because it's got 2 protons. That would make it a, an isotope of helium, since it's got 2 protons in the nucleus, but that's, that's not what we get. Instead, we get uh, a helium-4 nucleus, so 2 protons and only 2 neutrons, and we get separately the fifth the th sorry the third neutron you'll notice here that the neutron has been uh, given an atomic symbol uh, lowercase n is the convention and then mass number the number at the top 1 neutrons have relative mass 1 and 0 for the atomic number because obviously a neutron doesn't have any protons in it for these nuclear fusion processes, you do need to know the symbol for both neutrons and protons when needed. Uh, and those are shown here now. So a proton, um, hopefully, uh, logically, has a mass number of 1. Protons have a relative mass of 1. And an atomic number of 1, because a proton has 1 proton in it. Uh, and so the symbol for a proton, 1,1p. One, one, neutrons, as we've already said, 1,0n. If we wanted to, we could spend a whole lot of time exploring all the different processes that happen in the stars, all the fusion processes that give us the many elements we find in our periodic table. Uh, those processes are called stellar nucleosynthesis, and if you want to look it up, there's lots of information on the web, and you can see the whole chain of events that occurs going through many different stages in the life cycle of a star. But it's not necessary for the A-level chemistry course. Um, and so we won't be exploring this here. While you don't need to know any particular nuclear fusion processes off by heart, you do need to be able to take a written description of a nuclear fusion process and use it to write a nuclear equation. Now, a nuclear equation is in some ways similar to the kind of balanced chemical equation that you have already been introduced to. Uh, but the difference is that instead of showing chemical substances reacting, uh, it shows nuclei reacting. And so we'll look at an example here to show how this is done. Take this example. Two carbon-12 nuclei fuse to make a heavier nucleus and a neutron. So how do we go about writing a nuclear equation here? Well, the first thing is to write down uh, what we can think of as the reactants, the nuclei that are going to be fusing. And the question says it's two carbon-12 nuclei. So we can write those like this. Uh, carbon, if we look in the periodic table, has atomic number six. So we can fill the six in. Um, and so we've got our two nuclei, both with atomic number six and both with mass number 12. Now, the next thing we can do is look at the product side. And we can see what we can write for sure on that side. And we're told uh, a neutron. So we've been introduced to the atomic symbol for a neutron, 1,0n. So we can write that in. And then the other product isn't as clear. It just says a heavier nuclear. So how do we know what to write there? Well, just like a normal chemical equation has to balance, uh, a nuclear equation has to balance in terms of the mass number and the atomic number. If we look on the left, we've got the mass numbers 12 and 12. And if we add those together, that makes 24. So now that must balance with 24 on the right-hand side. At the moment, we've only got 1 for mass number on the right-hand side. And so to balance with the 24 on the left, we're going to need a further 23 mass. If we look at the atomic numbers now, over on the left, we've got a 6 and a 6. 6 plus 6 makes 12. And at the moment, on the right, we've got the zero for the atomic number of the neutron. And so to balance the 12 on the left, we're going to need atomic number 12 uh, for our other product on the right. Now then, it just remains to look up in the periodic table what has atomic number 12, and that'll lead us to magnesium. So we can fill in now the element symbol for magnesium. And there is our complete nuclear equation. Well, if that last example made sense to you, uh, here's a slightly more um, challenging one uh, to get your head around. So you might want to pause the video here and see if you can think this one through for yourself before I go through it. So in this example, once again, we have two carbon-12 nuclei fusing. 
Uh, but this time, different products. It tells us that we're going to make an oxygen-16 nucleus, and then two other identical nuclei. So let's work through the process. Once again, we can write down uh, the reactants, the two fusing nuclei, and that's the same as before. And then we can go over to the product side. What have we been definitely told about? Well, we've been told we're going to make an oxygen-16 nucleus. So we can write the 16O. Looking at the periodic table, oxygen has uh, atomic number 8, so we can fill the 8 in confidently. And then we can move on to the other two identical nuclei. And we're going to do this by balancing the numbers once again. So looking over on the left, we'll start with the mass number. Uh, 12 plus 12 makes 24 in total for mass on the left. And going over to the right, at the moment we've only got 16, so we're not balanced. And what we actually need is a further 8 uh, for mass on the right. But however, that's spread, remember, between two nuclei, and they're two identical nuclei. So if we've got mass of 8 to make up, and we've got two identical things to provide it, then each of them uh, surely must have mass number 4. In a similar way, if we go over to the left, we've got atomic number 6, plus atomic number 6 makes a total of 12. And looking over on the right so far, we've only got atomic number 8. So once again, we're not balanced. Uh, what's the difference? Well, uh, we need a further 4 on the right-hand side to balance the atomic number. And again, that is provided by two identical nuclei. So therefore, uh, it follows logically that both of those must have atomic number 2. You might want to pause there and just check for yourself that we have now uh, fully balanced the mass and atomic numbers in that equation. So we're not quite complete. Uh, all we have to do now is just fill in the element symbol for what else has been produced. Uh, and so we look at the atomic number, it's 2, go to the periodic table, uh, atomic number 2 is helium. So we can write HE and we're done. We've talked so far about nuclear fusion as a process that happens in stars, and it's true to say uh, that this is not something that we experience in an everyday way on Earth with nuclei fusing together uh, to make a heavier nucleus. Now, you need to know the reason for that and be able to explain, therefore, the conditions that are, that are required for nuclear fusion to occur. The reason is based on the charge of nuclei. You should know by now that nuclei are positively charged. They consist of protons um, and neutrons. Neutrons are neutral and protons have a positive charge. So the nucleus always has a positive charge. Well, like charges repel. And so two nuclei will always repel each other. And the repulsion between them is very powerful. So in order to make a nuclear fusion process happen, you're going to have to overcome this powerful repulsion uh, between the two positively charged nuclei. That's going to require a whole lot of energy. So what conditions will mean that this is going to happen? Primarily, we're going to need extremely high temperature. Temperature is a measure of kinetic energy, and so when we have extremely high temperature, we have lots of kinetic energy, and that's going to allow the repulsion between the two nuclei to be overcome. The other thing that's present in stars is extremely high pressure at the core of a star, extremely high pressure, and so that's forcing the nuclei closer together than they might be otherwise. Of course, you might hear in the news and discuss generally the idea that we'd quite like nuclear fusion to happen on Earth. And there's been a lot of ongoing research, a lot of money, a lot of time put in to trying to build uh, reactors on Earth that could provide these uh, conditions, the extremely high temperature um, and the extremely high pressure. Uh, those, those, uh, that research is still ongoing. We haven't got there yet, but uh, who knows? Maybe as you progress through your uh, science uh, career, um, you'll be part of the team that brings it to reality.